Hey everybody, thanks for joining us. Uh, normally Owen Falk is on the BS and the NLL uh, show and it takes me about, I don't know, we usually talk for about a half hour or so and then I cut a bunch of it out to try to make it shorter for that show. So instead now I'm going to air uh, the longer version of me and Owen talking because I have a blast talking to him. I think uh, other people like hearing his perspective on lacrosse. He's got great seats. He sits right behind the uh, Calgary goalie uh, for the regular season games, probably for the playoffs as well if they make it. But um, So I'm going to air his whole thing and then I'll still clip part of it for BS in the NLL like we've been doing. Uh, thanks everybody for watching. Like and subscribe. Yeah, so we've got Owen Falk with us, the uh, one of the Thunder Monkeys players and a uh... So you, with when it comes to the uh, lacrosse barriers, are you? Yep. You're a coach mentor for that program as well. I am a coach for that program as well as I do a lot of the social media work. That's awesome. So uh, yeah, I'm super excited we got it hooked up. Uh, yeah, but like we were talking about the uh, Calgary this week did basically the exact opposite or what everybody else has done to them. They came out of the gate on fire this week. They did five, five, nothing for, for, for the majority of the first. And then Josh Courier with his first ever goal. Now that was awesome. Yeah, that's huge. And uh, I see you guys had another sweet stat up there. That was also the first time he's played with his brother since 2019 with the uh, senior a Peterborough Lakers. Yes, indeed. And they yeah, they won three consecutive back to backs, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, with the man cuff is what it looks like. Wow, so that yeah. that's an impressive fact. So that's uh, that's huge, and I, I it was great to see, like you said, that that spark kind of helped him go. And uh, King must have really listened to our first show where we said he <laughs> needs to step up because ever since then, King has been on a tear as well. Yeah, King was definitely on fire, especially with that hat trick. Yeah, hundred percent. The uh, he's got the hat trick, but I think like the big thing that you're seeing from King is just the leadership and like staying, you know, out of the box, making sure he scored at the right time, getting the team moving. So much of that leadership quality that you uh, you guys needed for such a young team. Yeah, no, totally. Everyone stepped up like. Zach didn't want his brother showing him up, so he he went goes and scores right after his brother a few minutes after. <laughs> yeah, and then uh, so finally, when the first San Diego goal that was uh, also a former rigger, Dane Doby, as well as the assist. Yes. So uh, yeah. and then they kind of so they get through the half, and then it's eight to four. And again, you see King gets the assist on the power play. He's part of making it go. And uh, Hairwires, he had two power play goals. Uh yeah. Felt the. I I don't think they were in the first, from my recollection. They were actually throughout the whole game. Yeah, yeah, but wow, yeah. what a uh, what what an output that they're starting to get from all the guys. I mean, that is exactly and what. I find so impressive of it though. So like you look at hair wires and he only took five shots. So with five yeah. shots and two goals. Wow. <laughs> what well, you also got to remember those first three goals were against Frankie who was benched the rest of the game. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Once they, uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so Shigley Otto, Yeah. And then they pulled him, but that is really what is so important in this league. You see it more than anything. And having a, a, a goalkeeper like Del Bianco is one thing Calgary has in their favors. They had that stellar goalie. And as a Firewolves fan, having Dougie uh, Jamison, I definitely know the value of a goalie. And, and as you saw, what a huge difference. Because even um, if San Diego like was able to, to make more of a comeback out of it, it's hard to get out of a five-goal deficit. Yeah, totally. And especially since Calgary wasn't lighting up either, they kept hammering it on for the third and fourth and well, that's, ended, up, ended up with the W. Yeah, one thing that I noticed as I'm looking through the stats is you look and you see that uh, Calgary never let um, San Diego, other than they had that one four-goal run at the beginning in between the first and the second, but then they yeah. never allowed them to get that kind of run again. Every time... <laughs> Uh, San Diego scored, Calgary would come back, or like they had the two goals, and then Calgary would yeah, come back. Yeah, it was always, uh, uh, 
You're right. San Diego would score one, and Calgary would come back with one or two, like pretty responsibly. Yeah, and that is uh, talking to so many of these players. They always talk about it's a game of runs. You're gonna have these runs that happen where you get a goal or two, but that, like you said, is such a huge thing for uh, Calgary. Is they stopped really the runs, and the only runs that were had was the big run from them at the beginning, and then they had another three goal uh, run there. Yeah, they actually just were able to get those longer runs. Something that, uh, it's really funny, because when you look and you see, like, uh, Dickinson left because he really, you know, thought that he would have a better chance to uh, get a cup. But as we've been talking about, this Calgary team is the dark horse. I think they're going to be like Colorado. They had a little slow start, but you you could see the pieces there at the beginning. Yeah, uh, totally. Another thing I I uh, I kind of noticed was most of San Diego's goals happened to be on the power play. That's what I noticed watching uh, watching it. So considering uh, they were on the power play for the most part, letting Delves getting a few goals past them isn't that major. Right, because they're not those uh, those goals that the goalies, you know, that they're going to let get in their head because it's a power play, it's the ball. Yeah, movement. exactly. Now, one stat that you guys had pointed out that we kind of glazed over and you kind of touched on it there was in the first half there was already 14 penalty minutes. I mean, this was a very, yeah. very chippy physical. <laughs> yeah, th- it was a very chippy game. Like, I was watching it and I'm surprised there wasn't more penalties because every time – just before they cut commercials or whatever, you'd see guys chirping at each other a bit. Yeah, and I think a lot of it is that uh, you've got a lot of these guys that have left that team to go to San yeah. Diego because they basically were saying Calgary wasn't good enough. So you got to yeah. imagine the Calgary players take that, and they're like, oh, yeah, guys, look at what we got. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, one of the things I, uh, that stood out to me was Zach Cur- uh, Courier, actually, and Dane were chirping back and forth for a bit. Yeah, yeah. I, saw- I thought there was going to be a fight there for a minute. Yeah, and speaking of uh, Zach, now how many loose balls did he end up with? Uh, he's usually good for at least a, a dozen or so, right? Yeah, he got 12. Yeah. Sweet. So, yeah, he had a dozen. And uh, you actually see the top assist getter for the night. Uh, I'll announce that we had Tyler Pace for Calgary. And then uh, the one for San Diego is... Curtis Dixon. Curtis yeah. Dixon. Was, that's the problem. Hello. You've got so many uh, professional friends, you don't know which ones I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah, no. Curtis, yeah, he was top point getter of the, of the night for the Seals. Yeah, he, uh, he's definitely a, a great player and... Uh, and you always, I always kind of wonder when you see that is like, would the team play this good, or just having a player like Curtis Dixon, they kind of use him as a crutch, where they rely too heavily on him to score, whereas now the team really buys into that team concept because you guys yeah. had, uh, you know, you had two guys with the hat trick, but other than that, it really spreads out as far as your your goal getters. You know, you get one yeah. here, one there. Yeah, no, and I was also very impressed. Josh Courier, for his first game in a Roughneck uniform, also got five points. Yeah, looked yeah. really good. Made you guys look really smart for picking him up. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Sass was, well, he wasn't, uh, I read the report stuff, and Sass wasn't giving him playing time yeah. for the first few games. So it's like, uh, okay, why aren't you give, weren't you giving him playing time? Yeah, it's uh, it, it's crazy. But I mean, and the other thing you see here is like you've got Selma ten, uh, ten loose ball pickups, uh, yeah. Van Scheppen six, uh, Cornwall with seven, and and really the team is just so spread out. And it's that's yeah. uh, they don't rely on one or two guys to do it all. And that's why I said I think they're going to be the the Colorado this year. You've got a couple guys that can get the hat trick. You've proven time and time again that like King can be that guy. It, it, yeah, totally. Especially seeing what they were capable of this game and knocking San Diego off their undefeated streak, I was really impressed. Like, I was watching TV here and I was screaming out my bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even kidding, man. Like, I, I couldn't be, be at the game in person because of my injury, but I was doing like 
the who, uh, who scored and all like the celebrations that from my bedroom oh that's awesome i do that too all the time i watched the firewalls game and by the time i got home i ended up i drove down to new jersey to film another game and uh didn't get to watch it until um saturday morning and i was sitting here i woke everybody up in the house at like 6 30 in the morning i started screaming at the tv <laughs> yeah so yeah calgary's next game is actually toronto at home on 28th and Toronto just had a pretty good game. They beat Halifax, but it was a pretty beaten up Halifax. But Toronto's kind of been turning it around. So what do you think going into that Toronto game? How are you feeling? Uh, I'm feeling pretty good, especially if they show up like they did in the first half. There's definitely some guys out there they got to watch out for a little, but... Yeah, 100%. I think you nailed it when you said they have to show up because that seems to have yeah. been every game that they've really lost... They, if you look at the entirety of the game, you're like, if you yeah. guys could have showed up for the first quarter, yeah, you, you would have won that game. You could have just like, even if you only gave yourself a two goal deficit, you would have won the yeah. game. They, uh, but yeah, I, I, the, the thing with Toronto right now is I think Schreiber and Keo and uh, you know Rogers and everybody up there is starting to kind of get in sync, and that is a very yeah. dangerous team. I think this will be a great test because now we know how Sandy are. You know, Calgary kind of figured out San Diego, and they, yeah. they were able to give it to them. They showed at the first uh, quarter in that game, maybe the first half of the first game, um, they were stumped. But while the coaching staff and the players have really stepped up since then, because other than that first half, it is, it's been back and forth. And really, Calgary has won the second half of the last game and the entirety yeah. of the next game. So <laughs> they really are looking good. But I think uh, Toronto is – they can be that team, and it's like they don't quite have the experience. I don't know. I, I can't wait. I think it's going to be a super exciting game. Yeah, it's definitely going to be a good game. And then San Diego is going up against Colorado. Yes, and that'll be huge because now we really get to see how those two teams stack up. Zed Williams is back, so yeah. and some other guys. That's uh, that I tell you, that Colorado team too. They they are just as good, but uh, I can tell you firsthand that I have watched Nick Rose shut down my Firewolves many times, though. <laughs> and he, he, if anybody can really turn that game around, it's going to be Nick Rose. But you guys have, you know, Delbs, and Delbs usually is up to the task. Yeah, totally. Delbs uh, managed to say, save uh, 42 shots last game, so let's bring it. Yeah, yeah, 42 shots. And the... One of the most impressive things I think that, and it's kind of been underrated, is San Diego has held teams to, so it was 10 goals this game. The last game they held them to nine. They didn't end up winning. But they have not had a real bad defensive game, like a complete defensive game. Yes, they have had some hiccups, I guess you could call it. But they, uh, I tell you, their, their defense, I think, is extremely underrated with Del Bianco back there. I think that's really what is the uh, the heart and soul yeah, no, of this Calgary team. Totally. And, like, D Delves is a, a great guy. He has, he makes amazing saves every game. He, he really is the threshold of the defense. Yes. <laughs> yes, it's, and it's huge to have that leadership back there with them, and, and they've got the guys. I'm so glad since me and you started really? talking, I pay so much more attention to this Calgary team because at first it was one of those I watch them, but they're in the West Coast, so I don't spend too much time watching the West Coast teams yeah. because I'm more concerned with uh, everything over here. But now, wow, I, uh, I'm so glad we did because I really think they are the dark horse there. I'm telling you, yeah. right now they might be the team coming out of the West because if they continue to grow – as they have been, who you got to be excited for the way this has been turning out. Yeah, no, I just looked at the standings today, and with the win uh, the other day, Calgary moved up to third in the West. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, Calgary moved up to third in the West, and Saskatchewan has got, uh, they're in a very similar position to you guys. A lot of young players, they've got to get some yeah. goals out of some of their younger guys, but they rely heavily on Church and a couple of their other players. So it's a very similar team. That's going to be a great game for you guys. I'm really curious to see how they stack up against Toronto, though, because, like I said, I think, you know, Schreiber and Keo is, I think, one of those players, too. I could not believe when uh, Halifax got rid of him, they let him go, because some of these guys are <laughs> yeah. like, what are you doing? But Right? <laughs> oh, man. It, it'll be... What do you think like, uh... is going to be their key? Is it going to be... I'm one of those people who believe 
a strong defense is a good offense. So that defense and Delph doing his thing, that's what's going to be key. 100%. And they, uh, they're they good for a couple transition goals a game. I mean, Delves yeah. with that sticks ever since uh, we talked about it. You know, I don't know if you remember if it was two weeks ago. But the first time I noticed it, and they play such a way that as soon as – if they miss the change once on the uh, – when you're playing against Calgary, they're coming yeah. down and they're going to have a breakaway or at least a you – know, Oh, yeah, no. Two. Delves is – per- uh, it can make those long passes for days. It's absolutely insane. Like, and he just lasers it through traffic or knows when to yeah. it. And how he does that with a goalie stick. Have you ever tried to throw with a goalie stick? No, but it, I could imagine. It's terrible. I don't know how these guys do it. I've, uh, yeah, I coach kids. So every once in a while I'll grab one of the goalie sticks. And the first thing I do, I throw it right in the dirt. I'm like, oh. <laughs> yeah, no, I actually won this stick actually from HBC lacrosse on Instagram. Ooh, sweet. I, I won this head, so it's actually going to be going to a guy. I think he's in Manitoba, Aiden. He's going to do it up. I'm thinking like a PS5 kind of design on the head. Uh-huh. It's going to be like metallic blue with some PlayStation logos and stuff. That's pretty fancy. See, uh, oh. Yeah. what we got and then uh yeah. my goal always is to get people to send me hoodies i like hoodies for some reason <laughs> yeah well i think lacrosse and berries has a few things in the work i'm not confirming or denying any of it uh-huh. <laughs> but yeah if we're uh yeah because like especially if they gave you that head we'll definitely shout them out and then when you get yeah, totally. back from there we'll do another shout out for uh those guys because <laughs> yeah, i totally. i don't think i've ever seen a playstation stick i'm really curious to how he yeah, I, like, he he works for one lax and stuff, so I'm excited to see what he does with it. I bet. That's uh, one thing is we've got a vinyl cutter, so, uh, like, if you guys <laughs> ever want simple, like, stickers for um, helmets, like one color stickers yeah. or something like that, we can cut them out for you pretty cheap. Because that's, nice. we do uh, stick dyes too, but we cut the the stickers and then we put the <laughs> sticker on and then we yeah. drop it in the bucket to dye it and then when you peel it out you pull the sticker off and it's kind of like hydro dipping kind of like hydro dipping yeah yeah so okay. we do uh but the the biggest thing is so when you're doing it with the lacrosse stick you have to warm the water up to 180 degrees holy so you keep, <laughs> yeah and it's hard because you actually have to keep the temperature around 180 because that opens the plastic up but not too much that ah. it, uh, like warps it and makes it so it's not not usable so. Yeah, I know very little about dying, so you, <laughs> it's interesting. Do you string them? No, he's actually going to str- custom string it for me, too. Do you know if he, uh, oh, so <laughs> do you have a preference on your stringing? Uh, not. So, like, this is this is my one stick, so it's a Lakota nice. U. We did uh, tiger stripes on it. I use this yep. Armour Mash Man. This stuff is so fun for like me because I'll take oh, yeah. it on the beach with me. This armor mesh is <laughs> yeah. so sweet. Well, fun fact, actually, Zach Courier, he actually works for Under Armour, testing out the different mesh and the strings. Oh, really? Engineer for them. Out. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, no. Yeah, that- me- yeah. That's not Under Armour, though. Those are, uh, it's Armour Mesh, they call it, but it's not actually the company Under Armour. It's uh, some yeah. other guy. I've got my wall yeah. stick I'm trying to show you, but it's stuck. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no worries. Yeah. There but, is. yeah, literally, he he plays around with all the sticks and tests them for them. Oh, that's, what a sweet job. This is my, yeah. uh, this is my pride and joy. I, I, st- I dyed this one all and strung it. But actually, the pocket was out of that Lakota, so this is a Thompson Brothers pocket that yeah. I pulled out and put in here. Oh, nice. And then, uh, so have you ever seen the movie Crooked Arrows? No. Oh, my God, you got to watch it. It's like the Mighty right. Ducks of lacrosse, but it's so good. Seriously? Oh, my God, yes. Oh, okay, I'm, put, but I'm this looking is, it up later. This is a bunch of the players that played in it. So Lyle, nice. Lyle Thompson was in it, and then... Yeah. Um, yeah, so I've got Alex Cook and Alex's son signed it for me, 
and Ty Hill and Tyson signed it for me. And I'm going to nice. have Neil sign it because he was the coach in the movie. But, uh, nice. yeah, that's my little pride and joy. It used to be my coaching stick <laughs> until I ran into Lyle Thompson and he signed it. Now it just hangs on the wall. Yeah, I've, I've met Lyle Thompson. He's an amazing guy. Yeah, super, super nice, chill guy. Oh, yeah, all the Thompson brothers. Yeah, I just got to meet Heine the other day for the first time down on the floor afterwards because they do that too. Yeah. And uh, I yeah, and his old man was out there. It was they, they're such a cool, cool family. They've done so much for the sport of lacrosse. Plus, I've learned so much about the Native American culture just from watching their videos. Yeah. No. Totally. They do a lot on that. Yeah, that is awesome. Oh man. Well, unfortunately. It's about my bedtime because we're uh, a couple <laughs> hours ahead of you. But yeah, thank, you. thank you so much. Uh, give us a quick shout out real quick as to uh, where people can find all your stuff. Yeah, so Thunder Monkeys is on Instagram at tmonkeysasslax. And then Lacrosse and Barriers, you can find us at Lacrosse and Barriers. And then... I won't plug me because I just feel like that's a shameless plug. But no, you gotta plug. You. You're the affiliate. You're the big time affiliate. We gotta plug. <laughs> okay, you. and then me, you can find at OJ the Dude. OJ the Dude, I absolutely love your name, and uh, we will have links for OJ the Dude, the Crossing Barriers, and the Thunder Monkeys in the description of our video. As always, yeah, thank you good. so much for uh, joining us, and uh, actually. <laughs> we'll see you next week. <laughs> Sounds good. Awesome. Thanks a lot, Owen. We'll talk to you next week. Okay. See you, Greg. <laughs>